Look, yeah, as you said, I was firmly terra firma, as, as we say, while they were not that. Um, this was one of the, the, the most distant spacewalks we had. But as you said, most importantly, these were civilians. And we mean by this, not professional trained astronauts who have spent decades doing this thing. Uh, because the spacewalk or the EVA is really one of the most dangerous aspects of space. You're being exposed to the vacuum of space, the emptiness. And if things go wrong, they almost inevitably always terribly go wrong. So the fact that this not just worked, that wasn't the key part, even though that was a good thing, but the fact that the way this mission came together, uh, and, you know, in addition to this spectacular helmet kind of cam we're getting now, but it really just shows how far along the space community in the private sector has come uh, nowadays. Yeah. So just and yeah. So this is the moment uh, where this build, this tech billionaire is opening. <laughs> wow, opening a capsule and uh, emerging from it. And Brad, yeah, just go into a bit more detail on um, uh, why this is so risky. What what can go wrong? Yeah. So you know, when we think of space travel, they're always in a pressurized capsule. So it's like an airplane, right? You know, they always talk about pressurized for your convenience. Uh, and comfort. And that's because the atmosphere thins and on an airplane and therefore the pressure goes down. So that changes slight small things in our body, but mostly kind of you get the buildup of pressure in your ears and those sorts of things. In space, because of the lack of atmosphere, essentially atmosphere, uh, and the vacuumness of space, there is no pressure. You get extreme temperature. And so you have to be not just insulated, but you have to have a pressurized suit that is contained and also protected from the radiation. So when you're outside that capsule, in particular where they went, which is quite far away from the Earth, much further than the space station, you're exposed to higher levels of radiation. That pressure has changed so that if you're not in a pressurized suit, you can quite literally implode um, in, in a very dramatically terrible way. So these spacesuits in the past have protected you from these environments as well as the temperature. You get massive swings of cold and hot. Um, obviously, also your oxygen to breathe. And so SpaceX was actually testing a new spacesuit as well as part of this. NASA has their own spacesuits, but they're a bit old and cumbersome. And in fact, most people are surprised by this, but the NASA spacesuits are actually generic size, like literally small, medium, large. It's not <laughs> customized to your body. These SpaceX suits are trying to be smaller, less bulky, still effective, and a bit more form fitting, so to speak, bet fitter fitted to the body to prevent less problems of using them. Yeah, and I'd read somewhere where they were effectively kind of like in a decompression changes, like divers use um, yes. for, for the five or several of the days uh, that they've been on the, on the way up there. Just explain why that happened and how that happened. Yeah, so, so this, uh, this capsule, the whole thing has to depressurize. So on the space station, they have airlocks. So they have airlocks where they seal the rest of the space station off so it doesn't change. And then they have a, an airlock that vents the atmosphere into space to go into equilibrium. Now, the SpaceX capsule doesn't have this. So the entire capsule, so even though there was only one person at a time that kind of popped up as we saw, two in total, the other two inside were still depressurized and exposed to space. So the entire capsule has to open and the entire thing has to vent. So you have to have your pressure, your suit come to equilibrium in sync with how the depressurization is happening into the capsule. And it happens in a fairly fast way. So you have to adjust for this over time uh, is not just for the spacesuits, but also for the capsule itself. It can't happen in instantaneous. Again, kind of like scuba divers going too far up and getting the bends. You have to slowly ease into it. Okay, and that just for our per viewers' purposes, I think this is a few shots from the International Space Station. Brad, Brad will correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but what does the fact that this was a private mission and a couple of civilians signify? Yeah, you know, the private sector has, has really come along. Uh, and what it's able to do is to do things in parallel. You know, NASA and this national agencies, there's only so much funding, there's only so much support, and there's only so many goals they can achieve. The private sector, what it's been able to do in an example like this, is test new inventions, but also goals that necessarily aren't just that of the national agency. So private space travel 10 years ago was, was pretty much not a thing for NASA, wasn't wanting to do it. The private sector has moved it along. Now, you know, Derek Isaacman, who's a tech billionaire, paid for this. But the other three um, were engineers and an Air Force pilot and, and, and a medic. 
And they were kind of normal employees that were doing different scientific missions. And so what these private sectors are able to do is have kind of essentially private astronauts do specific goals that move technology that is a bit more commercial in nature in parallel, but test it and advance it in a way that isn't relying on a bottleneck of trying to get everything through a central group like, a, like NASA or ESA. And now this spacewalk, was it probably the riskiest part of this mission and what, what happens next over the next couple of days with these guys? Yeah, so re-entry is always the riskiest part of any space. That's when you're slowing down your speed, re-entering their atmosphere. But the SpaceX capsule, the Crew Dragon, is proven. They've done this now a dozen times of crew. So th that's not the, the really risky part of the mission in this case. It really was the spacewalk. Um, it was the, the EVA or being exposed to the environment. But also, again, they have gone further from Earth than anyone since the Apollo missions. They're about 1,400 kilometers away at peak. Uh, the space station's only about 550 kilometers. So the whole duration of that EVA was about an hour and a half. They only spent about 30 minutes popping outside. Now that they've repressurized their capsule, it went kind of back to normal because it's also their sleeping and living quarters. There's no there's nowhere else to go. You're kind of stuck inside together. So they've repressurized it. They've had their sleep and they will slowly do their deorbiting as they approach the Earth. They're aiming to splash down kind of Sunday morning, our time, Saturday night, US. Yeah. Uh, okay, Brad, so good to have a chat to you. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks.